Hi guys, welcome back to Gardening with Dave. And uh, well, we finally made it to the allotment. Now, much the same as my greenhouse at the start of the season. You'll see that my allotment isn't in the best of uh, shape, not prize winning at the moment anyway. But I have the view that you just prepare the pieces you need when you need to use them. If you cleared the whole land and weeded it all and turned it over lovely and then started growing stuff, by the time you had got to planting at the far end, the weeds would be back, probably stronger than ever, three foot tall. So I uh, clear it as I need it. Less work, less effort. And uh, at some point in the season, it will look the best it'll ever look, but that's not important. The important thing is to get stuff in the ground, to get stuff growing. If you've just taken on an allotment or you've just got some new land, you it can be daunting to do such a big area all at once. So don't bother, just clear an area get something in the ground next time clear another area get something else in the ground a little bit at a time constantly doing a bit and within no time you'll get there so should we have a quick look around and see what I've got going on first off let's check out our potatoes how are your potatoes doing with the potato experiment mine have just popped up back home but uh, this is my potato area here at the allotment and lucky to have a, a lot more space so I thought I'd go for a lot more potatoes and as you can see, I've done them in trenches here and they're popping up nicely. I've already filled them in once and they're about ready to do again. So all I would do is, that's the trench where I had the potato originally, as it grows and it gets to a, you know, a decent height like this, four, six inches, then take soil from, your, from the mound and just backfill it up, pull it in and cover up more of the foliage leave some of it poking out at the top and then wait for it to grow again and I'll go along each row and do that and it'll grow a bit more and I'll fill it back up again and eventually you end up with a trench where you add a mound and a mound across the top of all your potatoes and in that mound when it comes to harvest time you should have tons of potatoes happy days the good thing about doing the trench system as well like this at the start when you've got your potato in there any rain that you do get Hits the, uh, hits the peaks and rolls down towards the potato. And actually I do that across the whole of the allotment because I use a, this is a hand pump system here and it can be a lot of hard work. Maybe you're lucky enough to have a, a hose at, at your allotment or obviously at home if you're doing it in your garden you've got a hose and it's easy to keep on top of things but because everything's done with a, a hand pump here and a watering can and there's a fair bit to water, you've got to use every technique you can. Uh, so yeah, there's my potatoes. See how they get on. What's next over here is my fruit, fruit section. Those uh, strawberries that we got online the other, the other week, they'll be going in here when the time's right. And I've got this frame off someone, it's in the village. That's an old uh, uh, canopy thing. I'm gonna use it to put a net over to keep the birds off my fruit. I've got some uh, four raspberry bushes here, a couple of red ones. Uh, a yellow one, it's supposed to be the tastiest raspberry, uh, fall gold I think it's called, and then a black raspberry, and then there's a cooking apple tree at the back there, pretty happy, the blossom's just gone from him now, but hopefully get some apples off him, and then some black currants, red currants and white currants, so they've been in, these are all put in last year, so they're starting to get established, hopefully get a decent crop off them this year especially if we can keep the, the birds and the beasties off. Next up is our onion section. Now, I moved my onion section. Was over the far end last year and suffered from quite a bad case of onion fly and trouble with onion fly. It started in my onions and wiped out a lot of my white and uh, red onions, but the trouble is it can also move on to shallots and leeks and the whole family can be uh, attacked by it. Thankfully, last year my Shallots avoided it, and uh, my some of my, I lost some of my leeks to it, but not all of them, so it wasn't a total loss. But the thing to do is to rotate your crops. So as well as rotating for the nutrients, different plants like different nutrients. So the idea is you move to a different place, and I just had my potatoes in this section last year. Now I'm putting my onions in it. You also move it because of the pests. So any onion fly larvae that was left in the soil over there is going to wake up. Not going to find onions, not mine anyway, because I've moved them. 
So here they all are. We've got red onions and white onions starting to pop up. Again, see, in trenches, make it easy for watering. There they are, popping up, looking lovely. And we've got shallots here. And these are the big banana shallots and those seedlings, if I can just get in, show you those. Can you see? Pop up just like our leeks did. Same family, and they, uh, they grow in the same way. You can also see there's a lot of other stuff popping up that will need weeding, but I tend to, if you water the land, then the weeds are gonna come just like your seedlings are, but I tend to leave it until they're a bit more established, and then I'll spend some time when I'm down here weeding a particular row. If, you, if I've tried to weed that now, I might end up disturbing or even killing some of my seedlings, so it's not worth it keeping it watered, let them grow stronger. And this also helps with recognition. So if you're not sure what a particular seedling is gonna look like, you wait till uh, you've got a definite row and you can tell what's, uh, what's a seed and what's a weed. But uh, also I noticed in here, as well as weeds, over here I grew some uh, Swiss chard last year and I did notice that a couple of the Swiss chards are popping up. There's one. Little purple fellow, more weeds, another one over here. So that's like plants for free. I might dig them up, move them to another patch, plant them on. Lovely Swiss chard, it's very easy to grow. It's great for eating. Leaves you can use like spinach and the stalks you can put in anything, stews and uh, curries and stuff like that. It's great. It's great to freeze as well. Very good. So I'm growing a lot more specifically up there, but why waste all of this uh, good stuff that's growing? Where else we got shallots? They've got coming up nicely. <clears throat> uh, more here. These are some from last year that I didn't eat. So they, uh, uh, where I store them, they started to sprout green like this. So I thought, well, I'll plant them and see what happens. And when you plant an onion that's started to sprout like that, you normally get four or five more from the same plant. You can see on this one. Look, see how it's split. Was one. Now we're going to get two big onions off it. Happy days. Shallots, you often get five or six. So here, look, five or six off one plant. Let that grow on. And again, just like the trench system, I've, I create a mounded section around the onion uh, so that any watering I do goes to the plant I want it to. All this part out here, I'm not bothered about that, and that's easier to weed then afterwards. But the... Uh, the plants that I want to get the water are going to get the water. Look at that as a potato from last year. A potato section. Don't need him. And then the last row there is garlic. Again, lots of other stuff popping up. Weeds, another potato, look. Out. Look, even a tiny potato you can grow a plant from. Oh, I think I've got enough, so I don't need him. As I say, when these garlics become more established, then uh, I'll weed each bed as the time comes. There we go, oh, that's the onion land. And in there, underneath the black plastic at the back there, that's where the uh, leeks are gonna go. You remember from the greenhouse? They'll be going in there soon enough. So, let's move on down. This is brassica land. Remember we had all our brassicas holding off? Well, I created this netting system and again growing them in trenches. Here's the cauliflowers. You see that? And in the back there are sprouts and then our broccoli on the far end. I've got another variety of sprouts to go in here. Uh, they are still in the greenhouse hardening off, but I'll be honest, I've not been very successful with sprouts and I'm hoping that this is the year. I've built them a purpose built house with a good netting to keep off the uh, butterflies and caterpillars from munching them. Uh, gonna keep them fed and watered and really good go. I provided my daughter with some decent sprouts because she loves them. We shall see. Also, I've got some purple sprouting broccoli here that I'm hardening, and off, hardening off. And I'm gonna plant them out. I'm gonna work out where to fit them. Maybe down the middle there. They grow quite tall, so down the middle. Not sure, I'll have a look at that though. Oh, well, and next time uh, is my bean area. I have my runner beans in here. And again, with the trench, I've, uh, I've just 
popped in some seeds into this one. Got some poles ready, see what pops up. You've got to keep your beans away from your onions. So I see those poles over the far side. I had beans on those last year and the onions down this end. I've swapped it over. They don't like each other, who knows why. And these other two poles, I'm going to be putting uh, French beans, smaller ones, lovely job. And all of this area, I put black plastic on. I just got this this year, new, uh, taken over from a couple of chaps. And this is going to be all of my courgettes, marrows, pumpkins, <clears throat> all across here. It's going to be great, but uh, when they get big enough, start digging that over and planting in there. And last bit. That's my ramshackle shed that I inherited. Uh, over the back, some of the uh, leaks from last year. Pretty happy. Thinking about leaving this one in. Look, there's a seed head there. Might leave him in. Let that uh, go to flower. Leak flowers are amazing. Big ball, big ball uh, blooms on them. And uh, then I could get the seeds off him because these were prize winning leeks. So might be worth saving them. And look at the size of that fella. Happy days, so I think I might save him, but these are still edible, you know, grew them last year. Picked some already, had some from a tea a few nights ago, all good. And here is my seedlings and root crops. Remember we were saying, uh, I think it was Towen who uh, planted some carrots and whatnot straight into the ground and he's worried if they're going to be okay. Well, that's what I've done here, as I say, root crops love to be where they're going to be forever. So I've got here carrots fly away and you can just see here they are popping through happy days hard to discern what's uh, weed and what's seedling at the moment but carrots look quite uh, their next leaves these are the nursery leaves little straight ones they go bushy like ferns so they'll pop through and again i won't weed any of this until i know exactly what is carrot and what is not next one over is salsify first time growing this this year and again that's popped up look at that it's like a grass now this is a piece of grass and that's salsify so as I say I'll wait till it gets more established before I do any of the weeding next over three more rows what's in here parsnips they notoriously take a while to come up and there doesn't seem to be anything coming up there next one turnips now I had a packet of turnips with 1,500 seeds in. And like, I, I don't mind turnip, but I don't want to eat 1,500 of them. But anyway, I put them in anyway. We'll see how we get on. This is a good variety. It's resistant to club root, uh, which is, there's always something trying to attack your plants, whether it's onion flies attacking your onions, carrot fly. Uh, in fact, that variety of carrot fly away. It's very good, resistant, or, you know, inherently resistant to flies and extremely tasty as well. There's always something trying to attack your plants, whatever it is, and uh, turnips are susceptible to club root. So there I bought a, a, uh, a variety that's resistant to club root and appears to be doing very well. I recognise recognize the seedling just there, look. You see that, and they've popped up all the way along, as well as some other weeds, because I've been watering, never mind. What's up next? Uh, Swedes. Can't really make out anything specific there yet, but we shall see. And finally, oh, now it's the Swiss chard. And there's definitely some of those popping up, little fellas. Happy days. Great crops, a good one because you can, you can uh, pick the leaves and uh, the rest of the plant carries on growing. So you can, you can keep picking it for months. And then at the end of the season, pick the lot, everything you've got left and uh, cut it up and freeze it. Freeze it just like uh, spinach, you freeze spinach. It lasts, lasts all, all winter, in fact. Only just finished last year's crop, so this is great. Really good one. Very colorful, very tasty. Next one over is beetroot. Lovely, oh no, this is a, the uh, multicolored variety. And they're, they're popping up too. Pretty happy, again, more weeds. This thing is weird. It's like a Christmas tree. Pops up everywhere. Never mind. What else? And spinach. Spinach chard. That's a good one. Little leaf. Pick and come again variety. You can 
I'm not sure if any of those popped up, but we shall see. Keep it watered. First job here when I arrived was to water it all, water all the seedlings because they love the water and it's very easy for it to dry out in this weather because it's so glorious. But there we go. Another little patch over the back there. Yet to decide what's going to go in there. Maybe more carrots. Oh, uh, asparagus. Want to have a go at asparagus? It's a tricky one. It takes two or three years before you can actually get any asparagus from it, but you've got to start sometime, don't you? So I might make an asparagus bed down there and see how I get on with that. Anyway, I think that's about it for this time. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, keep posting the questions. Love the questions. Take care and uh, see you next time.